everyone. So I took in all of the feedback from episode zero and I decided that my first episode was going to be a kind of how it's made episode. So I took the advice from one of my science heroes, Carl Sagan, and he said if you wish to make an apple pie from scratch, you first have to invent the universe. So I figured if I'm going to show people how to dye yarn, to knit with in different kinds of techniques, first thing I want to tell everyone about is how is how does yarn become yarn? How does it go from being a sheep and fluff nothingness to this jazz to colorful and then to becoming something you can actually physically knit with. This might take more than one episode, but I'm thinking I can get pretty far right now. Sheep get sheared about once a year and it makes a sheep that look a little bit like this, maybe a little less fluffy, to one of these little guys. And what comes off of them is then called a fleece, which looks like this stuff. It's filled with oils, manure, and pretty much any kind of nature crap, and half of its weight is taken off when it's cleaned. The fleece then goes through a rigorous combing and cleaning process. Um, some people call it picking. Um, it goes through many machines called carding machines that look like this. The little one that you can put on a table is what most hand spinners have, and then industrial sized ones look a little bit more like this, and they're absolutely ginormous. They comb all of the fibers into one direction, and it's then the wool is then taken off the machine into long strips, uh, what is then called roving, so it looks like this. So as you can see, all of these fibers are all going in the, a parallel direction, and that's what combing it does. Put it up to the camera so you can see. Yeah, so turns into, after it's been properly cleaned, this beautiful white awesomeness. This is actually wool and a little bit of nylon, so this has been blended as well, which you can do in the carding process. Um, I've seen spinners with the hand carters that are small enough to fit on a table and they can put glitter in them, they put kind of like this tensile stuff, they can put different kinds of colors in there to mix them all together and then that makes more of a bat which is a kind of roving but it's flat and it um, spins up a little bit differently. So what I'm going to show you now is dyeing this lovely roving and um, because I like to do geeky things, I decided what's geekier than a kind of uh, Once Upon a Time Sleeping Beauty mashup and I wanted to do um, gold, like Rumpelstiltskin spins gold. Um, and so then I would later, or in the same video depending on time, spin it up so that I'm spinning gold and I think that's really cute. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to soak this roving in a bucket of cool water. Um, if you actually put it in really hot water, you can felt it and then it's just yucky. Um, but what I want to do right now is just, I'm just going to dye it gold. What you can do is you can kind of braid it and it's actually a crocheted, it's like crocheting a huge thing of yarn. Um, and dip dye it to make a kind of variegated color. This one is what I call my, my frozen yarn. And so it starts at a kind of white gray, goes to teal, and then goes to this like darker blue color. And those are really fun to spin up because the color is changing as you go. Or you can dunk the whole thing in and just start sprinkling dye on top of it and it, it'll catch wherever um, wherever it catches and soak up the dye. And so this one is what I did, uh, that's what I did with this one. I think, yeah, I'm almost positive. I braided it and then I dunked the whole thing to soak for probably overnight. Uh, though it doesn't really need that long. Right now I'm only gonna do it for probably a few minutes. But you just wanna get it all the way soaked through wet, wring it out, and then dunk it in the water and you can just throw dye on it. 
I use Jacquard acid dyes, and today I'm going to do gold, gold okra. It's going to be that yellow color. Do do do, and then also some Aztec gold. And I'm probably just going to mix them up and uh, see what I get. I use little like teaspoon measurements that are strictly for dye only. I've never used this on food. I've only used it for dye because jacquard acid dyes are actually toxic. So all of my utensils that I use, these are tongs that I bought specifically for dyeing um, and my buckets of for water and my pots for dyeing specifically only used for dyeing because if you were to eat off of it you could get sick I don't know what the harmful effects would be but not good because it's toxic so I'm gonna go soak the uh, roving and then I will come back and show you how I dye it I'd like to show first how I'm going to braid it braid crochet it so that I can um, soak it easily without a kind of getting tangled up. So you want to make essentially like a slip knot with it, if I can actually do that. And I'm going to do mine really, really loose because I, um, I don't want there to be a lot of white spots in this when I'm dyeing it. So make like a slip knot so you can put your hand through it and you do a very, very loose crochet chain stitch where you are making a loop, bringing it through, making a loop, and this is like big enough to be a bracelet, you know, it's just like huge. So I'm going to do that for the whole thing, and it shouldn't take too long. And it makes this really pretty cute braided effect. Just kind of tuck the ends in. And so you made a chain. And I'm going to go dunk that in water. All right, now this uh, water is beginning to boil. I have my roving over here and uh, my pot of somewhat boiling water right here. I'm going to be using a little bit of vinegar. Now, can't really tell how much this is, but about um, half a cup or so. Uh, I'm not really precise with measurements because I like the way that it is a surprise. <laughs> um, now the more vinegar you use the brighter the color uh, but you really don't need too much for it to activate the dye. So I'm going to pour that in there. Make sure that it's all in mixed in um, and then I'm going to start with my hmm, let's do gold solid gold, gold okra I don't use a full teaspoon by any means a little goes a long way with this stuff and I would say that's going to be sufficient stir that in sure it's totally dry so that I can put it into to the next one. This is the gold, Aztec gold. Of course it drops. And I'm going to use about the same amount. Um, maybe a quarter of a teaspoon. I really should get those littler, littler spoons so that I can get exact measurements. But like I said, I like to eyeball it. I like to add more dye as I go. I don't follow too many recipe recipes. I was never good at cooking anyways, so I'll make it up as I go. So here is my roving, fully submerged and it's been soaking now for probably 20 minutes. Um, you really want it to be fully wet and filled with water. And then you're going to slowly squeeze the water out so that like a sponge it soaks up all of the dye really really well it's going to look like it's going to smell like a dog or what I imagine a sheep smells like when they're wet alright 
so that is all yucky and and mostly dry so we're gonna start dipping it in there and pushing all of the roving down into the dye pot and the stuff that goes in first is going to catch the dye first so if you do want it to be gradated at all um, you know dip one half in or dip just the end in and then slowly put it down and you'll find that the one the parts that got in last and I'm gonna turn this off because it doesn't need to be boiling anymore the part that goes in last will be the lightest but as you can see it picked up the dye really well oh and also, also a really important thing if you're trying to find a pot don't get one with a black inside because you won't be able to see your dye you really won't be able really even to see your roving and uh, I did that I learned that the hard way buying a nice pot it's black couldn't see anything then it was a real surprise I don't like that much of a surprise so it's important to let anything that you're dyeing whether it be yarn roving a t-shirt anything um, to cool completely especially if you're using boiling water which I was um, and only then can you take it out and put it into lukewarm or cool water but don't go from really really hot to ice cold you can felt it and then it'll end up really hard feeling and hard to spin up um, I'm gonna stop this episode here because it's getting kind of long and in the next episode I'm going to show this roving uh, totally dry and how it died up in the crocheted chain that we did because it some parts are definitely darker and some parts are lighter because of that where the chain is um, touching one another it's gonna didn't get as much dye uh, but I think it looks really cute so I don't, I don't mind uh, you can once it's totally dry chain it up again and then re-dye it and then the parts that were a little bit lighter will hopefully get more but I don't really mind. Um, so next episode I'm going to, in episode two of Electric Sheep, I'm going to be talking about how to use a drop spindle and how to use a spinning wheel. And they're going to be the most basic tutorials possible but hopefully they'll still be enough to show you how yarn is made. Um, and then I'm going to show you how to set the skein um, it won't be this skein because it takes quite a while to actually spin up. But I'm spinning some other yarn up right now and hopefully I'll be done by the time I shoot the video. So I'll show you how to set the skein which means, well I'll show you what it means, but to make it pretty. <laughs> and um, plying yarn which is also how to put two yarns together to make them pretty. Um, and that'll all be in episode two. So thank you for watching and subscribe if you want to be updated for further videos. Uh, and like if you learned anything, I guess. Bye-bye. Um,